Welcome to our next tutorial, how to balance equations. So we're going to talk about uh, some examples here. So firstly, when we're talking about balancing equations, we're going to have a, a reminder of the golden rules we talked about. We're going to do some step by step uh, of the process. And we're going to look through some examples as well. So remember those golden rules. Firstly, we must have the correct reactants and products in the equation. Our equation must reflect what's really involved in the reaction and we can't add any extra things or leave anything out. It's got to have everything. So we must use the correct formula for each substance. We can't alter the formula to make the balancing step easier and formulas aren't the formula to make our balancing step easier. They are what they are. So once we have the correct formula, once they're known, we mustn't alter them. And then when we have that, we can balance the equation using algebra. And we can only at that point change the quantities of each substance. That's the big numbers in front of each of the formula. So what's the process? So going step by step, firstly, we need to know what the substances that have reacted together and the products that are made. And uh, my tip if you're struggling is to use a word equation at that point. Then work out the formula for each reactant or product in the equation. Use the correct formula. And we need to consider the valency of the atoms in each substance to come up with the correct formula, or we can look it up. And then we would write a draft chemical equation using these formula that we've come across. So we're going to have reactants through so going to products with the arrow like so. So for example, A plus B gives C plus D. That's just our draft that's unbalanced at the moment. And then the next step is balancing the equation. When we've balanced the equation, we will have the same number of, of atoms of each element on the reactant side of the equation as there are on the product side. So on, in other words, on each side of the arrow. And we often need to change the number of molecules of some of the substances in our equation but we've never changed the correct substance formula, as we keep saying. So when the equation is balanced, it reflects what's actually happening in the test tube, the beaker or whatever. Reactions and formula don't change for the convenience of balancing, unfortunately. Sometimes they can be quite complicated, but that's, that's just how they are. So let's look at a first example. And here we're going to talk about the reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. The products of that reaction are sodium chloride and water. So first step, let's write the word equation. So that sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid gives sodium chloride plus water. Then we can work out the formula of sub for those substances. So sodium hydroxide, NaOH, hydrochloric acid, HCl, sodium chloride, NaCl, and water is H2O. Now we're going to write our draft equation. Here we go. NaOH plus HCl gives NaCl plus H2O. Our next step is to balance. So we're going to balance each element, each atomic symbol if you like, to get the same number on the left side and the right side of the equation. So let's look at them one by one. Sodium atoms first. So you can see there is one sodium on the left and one on the right. They're balanced. Oxygen atoms next. So again, one oxygen atom on the left side and one on the right. They're also balanced. Hydrogen atoms. There's two on the left, one in the NaOH, one in the HCl, and two on the right in the water, both in the water molecule. So two on each side, that's balanced too. And for chlorine atoms, again, we have one chlorine on each side, so they're balanced too. So all of our atoms balance in this equation. So our balanced equation is exactly the same as our draft equation because all the formula, all the atoms balanced on each side of the equation. We didn't need to adjust the number of molecules of any of the reactant cell substances. And this accurately now reflects what's happening in the test tube or whatever. One molecule of each of the reactant produces one molecule of each product in this case look at another example and this is the reaction between potassium and water and the products of potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. 
So our word equation, potassium plus water, gives potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen. And our formula, our potassium is just K, water is H2O, potassium hydroxide KOH, and hydrogen is H2. So if we put those into our draft equation, we have K plus H2O gives KOH plus H2. And now let's try to balance that to get um, the same number of each atom on each side. So potassium atoms, we have one on each side of the equation. Oxygen atoms, again, we have one on each side of the equation. Hydrogen atoms, well, we have two here in the water on the left-hand side of the equation, two in the hydrogen and one in the KOH on the right-hand side of the equation. So that doesn't balance. So how do we deal with that? We put a half in front of the hydrogen and in front of the H2 molecule. So we've only got half of an H2. So there's actually only one hydrogen atom we're getting from that. And what's that mean? Well, we have a revised equation that KOH plus H2O gives KOH plus half H2. And to balance that, we need to double everything because having a half of a molecule or uh, of a substance is not uh, good practice. So we uh, double everything. We can do that as long as we do it to all the molecules in the equation on both sides. So we end up with 2K plus 2H2O gives 2KOH plus 1H2. And this 1, we don't need to write in because we haven't written it in elsewhere. These are all 1s as well. So we just drop that out. And our final equation is 2K plus 2H2O gives 2KOH plus H2. So everything now is balanced. It didn't match uh, the draft equation, but now we've managed to balance it. So we have equal numbers of atoms on each side. And this now accurately reflects what's happening in our reaction. Let's have a look at another example. And this is the reaction between aluminium and oxygen. And this produces aluminium oxide. So our word equation, aluminium plus oxygen gives aluminium oxide. So the formula for these substances, aluminium, of course, is just Al. Oxygen is O2. Oxygen exists uh, when a molecule with two atoms of oxygen in. And aluminium oxide is Al2O3. So our draft equation using these formula is Al plus O2 gives Al2O3. Let's try to balance that to make sure we have the same number of each atom on each side. So aluminium atoms first. Well, you can see we have just one on the left here, but two on the right. This two is telling us there's two atoms of aluminium in that molecule. So how do we deal with that? Well, we need two aluminiums on the left side. So we just put a big two in front of the aluminium. How about oxygen atoms? Well, oxygen, we have two on the left side and three on the right side. So how are we going to deal with that? Well, we have one and a half of these oxygen molecules. And now we have three oxygen atoms on the left side. So now a revised equation. We have 2Al plus one and a half O2 gives Al2O3. But remember, we don't like to have halves in our formulas, in our equations. So we're going to double everything again. To balance this so we end up with 4Al plus 3O2 gives 2Al2O3. Notice we've doubled the amount of each of the substances in this equation. And that's our final equation that's now balanced. Our original draft equation was not balanced so we had to balance it. Now we have the same number of uh, atoms of each element on each side of the equation. And this now actually reflects what's happening in our equation. So in summary, chemical equations reflect what's actually happening in a reaction, including the ratios that's happening. Uh, it shows the reactants and their products and their ratios. We have to remember that uh, when we're doing um, reactions, atoms are not created or destroyed or changed. So reactants and product sides must balance with each other. The number of atoms must balance. So unbalanced equations have no value. They don't accurately reflect what's happening. They're meaningless effectively. 
and tomorrow we're going to look at some chemistry calculations.